Welcome back to part two. This video will be covering painting and installing eyes. You can find all the materials used in my Etsy store. They are available as a DIY kit. To make eyes, make a template out of paper and draw this onto the base and cut it out of the foam. You'll then want to draw around your template onto some craft plastic, which can just be cut out using some scissors. Then you'll want to draw a circle for the pupil and I usually use a craft knife to start this off but then after that you can use scissors to cut out the rest. Remember to continually test your work. If you're going to use buckram for the eyes I suggest painting it black on one side to make it easier to see through it and what you want to do is start by laying down a base colour of whatever your eyes are and this can be try and get a nice solid start to the eyes. I lost the footage of putting down the initial colours but this is just the start where I'm just putting down whatever I think works and marking out the general shape of the pupil and iris. So I pretty much repaint the pink eye from scratch though because I didn't like the colour that I'd use as my base coat but because it's acrylic paint you can paint over whatever colour you have. So that's why it's so good to do highlights in acrylic paint because you can paint directly over black paint with white and it will actually show up. So saying that, one of the first things you want to do is start marking out where your highlights are on the eye. So you can see I even put a lot of highlights inside the pupil. This gives the eye a lot more depth and makes it a lot more 3D. So the, as a general rule you want darker at the top of the eye and lighter at the bottom to create a shade effect. You can do this by painting on a gradient or simply by blocking in darker and lighter colours. Um, I do a mixture of both and I'm continually switching between the eyes to try and pull them together because I'm working on a set of eyes even though they're two different colours I need them to look like a pair and not two separate ones and what you can see here is I've picked up the colours from one eye and put it into the pupil of the other so it really makes them feel like these go together Putting a colour in the pupil whatsoever really does help make it look a lot more interesting I try to put a really bright colour in the pupil and surround it with a black outline and gradient it to black at the top. Um, this will just really make the eyes pop a lot more. Don't be scared to go really white with your highlights and really black with uh, your shadows. I use a lot of purples in the shadows because it's a bit more interesting than black but then I'll go over specific parts with a black. Also I would suggest painting past the iris of your eye and making the design a little bit larger so that if you change anything to your eyes it will still be completely covered in paint. So you want to then cut and stick your painted buckram onto your plastic eye whites and then just glue gun these on, try not to use too much glue because it will go through the holes in the mesh and Try to do it in small segments because you saw I had to scrape some of it off where it dried because I'm using thin little bits of paint. So here I'm preparing the base. What I do is I stick the lining down all around the eye and then I cut a hole in the middle of the eye and cut it all into little triangles which I then pull out and glue down so that you get a nice covering that covers as much of it as possible with the inside lining. But to make sure that there are no gaps whatsoever I just use a strip of black fleece, yeah black fleece here, or you can use black felt, whatever works, and just cut little slits into it and pull it flat and stick it down with hot glue once again. So 
now that side of the base is ready for the eyes. If you're making follow me eyes, you'll need to make some rims for the eyes. I make these out of white foam. So here you can see me measuring to decide how big I'm going to make it and then scoring where I'm going to cut before cutting it with some scissors. You want to try and get it as straight as possible if you can. So when gluing on the eyes to the strips, you need to try not to get any on the inside because that bit's going to be visible. So you don't want lumps of glue there, obviously. <laughs> um, but because the join is so small, what I often do is use little bits of uh, black felt just to help secure it on. And just start at one corner and slowly work your way around again just using little bits of glue and trying not to get any on the inside as with all of this i'm constantly adjusting and readjusting the eyes until they look right this is an ongoing project don't be scared to make changes even after you've already finished one part And of course you want to repeat this to the other eye. And what I do is when I get to the end, I just trim off the excess. I would always suggest making it longer than what you think because it, when it wraps around, it sort of gets shorter because it's no longer a straight shape, it's now rounded. So to make the eyelids, to give the follow me effect, I redraw the eye pattern a bit wider and cut a hole a bit smaller than the eyes. So this will help cut off part of the eye so that it looks like when you move it, it follows you. When putting in the eyes, don't do what I did here and just start putting it in. You'll see me take it back off in a second. But what you need to do first is cut down the rims of the eyes so that they sit a bit more straight. So on the inside, you need to trim off a little bit of the um, rims just because obviously people have more forward facing eyes than animals so you need to compensate for this to angle it so that a person can comfortably look forwards and also you can see I inset the middle deeper than the edges and the edges stick out a bit that's also to help with that forward vision and then same process as gluing on the rims of the eyes, you want to slowly glue on the eyelids, making sure not to get too much glue on the inside wherever you can. So here you can start to see the follow me effect take shape. And what I do just to fill in the gaps in the foam is just use little scraps just to build up the area around the eye so that they're, they're nice and secure. And obviously when you fur, it will all flow right up to the eye. Trying, even if you are using scraps, try to get this as even as possible because it does really, it looks a lot better the more symmetrical you can get it. So here you can see me taking it off just to show you the follow me effect a little bit better. Now one of the things I didn't do but then later came back and did was put on a little bit of felt over the top of the craft bow. Now you don't have to do this, but I think it gives it a nicer finish and stops the foam from ever getting scratched because the craft foam can scratch. It's the same in reverse of sticking down the lining. You cut a hole and then slowly fold the little bits over and tuck it in and glue them down to just line that outside. And I think it just gives it a bit of a nicer finish. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful to some of you. There'll be links in the description to my Instagram where I post updates all the time, my Facebook, my Etsy store where you can buy this kit. Uh, so you have everything to start. And most importantly, good luck with all your projects.